This show is made possible by support from Landsharks.ca. Visit them for all your coin and swag needs at www.landsharks.ca. And by viewers like you. Thank you for your donations. Geocaching 101. Caching along a route. And giving away some hardware. Lights, camera, action! It's Ice and Rise Geocaching Video Zine. Hi there, and welcome to Ice and Rye's Geocaching Video Zine. I'm Ice and Rye, thanks for watching. If you're new to the show, welcome to the family. What this is is myself, my co-host Roxy, and my camera operator Abel. We go caching, film it, throw it together a few hints, tips and tricks, upload it to the internet so you can download and watch it at your own leisure. If you're a regular viewer, thanks for sticking around, I appreciate your viewership. My website is iceandrye.com and my email address is geoiceandrye at iceandrye.com. So, What's new? Well, as I record this, it's February 13th, 2010. It's the first day of competition at the Vancouver Winter Olympics. And I'm glad I live 800 kilometers away. I've been following a lot of my Vancouver friends on Twitter and things are just crazy down there. So um, I'm glad I just get to hang out here in Prince George and watch everything on television. Now, weather-wise, this has been an incredibly mild winter here in Prince George. There's hardly any snow, and a lot of those caches that are normally like a 5-5 five, five in the middle of winter are actually back to being their regular 1-1. One, one. So, get some free time here the next couple weekends. I gotta go out and try my hand at caching again. Hi, Rox. How you doing there, girl? Speaking of caching, just last weekend here in the Prince George area, we had our Geocaching 101 event, which was hosted by the Pathfinders Club. What a great turnout. I have never seen so many new cashers at, a, at an event. Hey, guys, if this is the first time watching this video podcast, as I've said many times before, welcome to the family. It's a great show. We're a great family. We have a lot of fun doing this sport and doing this podcast. We had a huge turnout there. I got a little bit of video footage. And um, actually, they managed to somehow get a cash released during the event. And what was happening is um, one of our local cashers was demonstrating how to do pocket queries when this new cache popped up in the middle of the demonstration. And uh, the room just about empty with everybody going out to go for the first to find. But hey, Pathfinders Club, guys, you did a wonderful job, hosted a great event. Can't wait to meet up with you guys somewhere out there on the trail. So what have I got for you in this episode? Well, first off, actually second off, I'm just going to give you a teaser. We're going to be finding some new homes for some new coins. How am I going to do that? I'm going to make you wait till the end of the episode. But i uh, got some great contest news coming up here in a second. But as for this episode's main event, well, if you listen to the Caches of the Round Table podcast from a month or so ago, we were talking about some of the new features at the geocaching.com website, one of which was the new way to do caching along a route. Well, I finally got around to doing a demo on just how to use that new feature. And guys, if you remember the old way we had to go to Google and do a KML file and all this other crazy stuff, now it's super easy. So I'm just going to roll this tutorial, sit back, relax, and learn how to cache along a route. Caching along a route. Some of you might have seen my older tutorial on how to do this where you had to Go get Google Earth and put in your route and download this and upload that and sacrifice a live chicken and hopefully get some caches along the route. 
Well, thanks to the guys at the geocaching.com website. They've made it much, much easier now. And I'm just going to give you a down and dirty, simple tutorial on how to do this. It's really, really easy. First off, you need a premium membership. If you don't have a premium membership, forget about it. Because you have to run a pocket query. And that's the most important part of all this. So the first thing you're going to do is go to geocaching.com, sign in, and click on your profile page, which you just happen to have right up here. Now, scrolling down on the right side, you're going to see where it says user routes. Down here, you click on create a route. We'll just do that. And it brings up this lovely page, create, edit a route. All you have to do is just enter where you're from and where you're going. So in my case, let's say I'm going from Prince George to say Edmonton and click on search and voila one instant route starting off in Prince George going through the Robson Valley into Jasper and hightailing it right into Edmonton look at that it looks good you have to save the route so just click on save route changes it'll ask you if you're sure you go yep no problem We'll bring you to your next page, create a root. Root name, just enter in your whatever you like to call it. In my case, I'll call it PG to Edmonton. PG to Edmonton. And you can put in a short description, a trip to Edmonton. Again, you can put in keywords. Prince George, etc., etc., etc. And if you want, you can share it with people, included in the public directory. Once it's all done, click on save because, well, saving is very important. Then it'll bring up your list of routes. And as you can see, I got a couple of PG Edmontons because I've actually already done one. So we'll just click on this one here. Again, shows your map. Scroll down, and this is where it gets fun. Create pocket query. Click onto that, and it brings up the standard pocket query page. I'll show you the route up here. You can give it your name, days of the week. Now, here's a hint. This one took me a little while to figure out, but when you're doing a pocket query, do not check any date until you've actually entered all your data and seen the sample of the query. How often do you want to run it? Myself, I usually uncheck the day of, day of the week after the query runs because I just want to run it once. Um, if you do a lot of traveling, you might want to do it every week. Or you can just do it once and get rid of it. Your search radius. This is very important. How far off course you want to go. In my case, I want to stay pretty close to the highway. So we'll just say make it two kilometers. And show me. Number of caches. Max it out to 500. Now, cache types. If you're traveling, you're in a bit of a hurry, you don't want to do a lot of messing around, you say you don't want to do any multis or you know, unknown puzzle caches, you just sort of want to, if you want to do a lot of park and grabs, well in that case you can click on traditional, and if you're going away for vacation, maybe you want to do some events, and there's caches are always fun, because you just get in, read a sign, get some information, take the pictures, and away you go. Again, you can choose your container types. If you only want to do micros, <laughs> go for it. Now, here's where it's really fun. So filter options. A lot of people, they'll do pocket queries. They'll say, just show me 500 caches. And the problem is, is it comes along and it shows you caches you found, caches you own. Well, if you found them, you don't really need the waypoints. And if you own them, you're, unless you're going to do cache maintenance, again, you really don't need the waypoints. So for filter options... This, what I like to check off is that I haven't found, is active, and that I don't own. Now, this one here, I actually have to thank uh, my uh, caching buddy, Mally Boo Boo, for bringing up this one. Cause I think it's all happened to us where you've gone out looking for a cache, you look and look and look and look, you cannot find it. So you go, you log your DNF, and the cache is taken offline. So that always helps to... Um, Make sure that the cache is indeed active. Okay, again, more customizing terrain. Again, if you're driving, you don't want to spend a lot of time looking around. You can go greater than. 
If you want to look for all fives, you can go equal to fives and have a whole list of five fives. Or if you want to go less than, you can say just less than three and you know, just look for uh, easier caches. Again, it's all up to you. You're the one that's traveling. You know your itinerary. From there, you can output a standard thing, whether you want to use your regular email address or if you have an alternate on the road, say a Gmail account that you want to send it to, go for it. In the format, pretty much GPX is standard. And then click on Submit Information. Off it goes, and it'll come back, and you can now preview your search. Okay, so now you see your, now you see your pocket query. You got 320 caches, unfound caches between here and the center of Edmonton. So you go through here. It looks good. Now a lot of these are caches I've never heard of before, but I see Alberta, Alberta, Alberta. So a lot of these are probably closer to. Edmonton, but here I see Googly Earth Cache, which I know is just east of town. It's a fairly new cache, and I just haven't gone after it yet, and it's just off the side of the highway. So I know I got some Prince George caches also. So if you like it, you're good with it. Now you can go back, click on Edit, scroll down to here, click whichever the day of the week it is. In my case, I'm recording this on a Saturday. Click on Saturday, scroll down, click on Submit Information, and it'll go off and run your query for you. Now, I've already run the query. I've actually already gone ahead and downloaded and brought it into my computer. And, well, I'm actually going to do a quick switch switcheroo here. Mag magic, I am going to go from my Mac to PC. you got to love parallels on a Mac. So, some of you, or most of you should recognize the screen. This is GSAC, and this is the uh, GPX file I downloaded with my pocket query. And right off the bat, you're going to see some green squares over here. Yes, I did include my own uh, my own caches because some of these I have to do a little bit of uh, cache maintenance on my way out of town. Uh, here's one. Of, this is this got to be my favorite hide of all time. The uh, outside the box. Yes, that's the the famous box car cache that you've seen me stand in front of many, many, many times. So. Using the PG View Highway Lookout, which is right on the eastern end of, edge of Prince George, is my center point, sorted by kilometers. And you can see there's some here in Prince George. Then we get out to quite a bit of distance, where we go from just about 100 kilometers east of Prince George to the other side of McBride, and then all the way through the park. We are now into uh, Hinton and the Edson area down around here. And I've also gone ahead and loaded the caches into my uh, Garmin mapping program. And here you can see the route from Prince George through to Robson Valley into Jasper and all the way along this beautiful Highway 16 corridor into Edmonton. And that's where all the caches are. So just load those into my GPS, hop in the van, and away we go. Prince George to Edmonton, caching on the way. And that, folks... Is how you go caching along a route. I told you it was easy. So there you go, caching along a route. Super duper easy to do. Just go to the geocaching.com website, enter your route, save it, run a pocket query, and away you go. So let's give away some hardware. One girl, what's in here? All right, folks, I've teased it for the last couple episodes. And now it's time to give away some hardware. It's the return of the iTunes comment coin giveaway contest. If you know how it works, make sure you get your comment in. If you don't know how it works, it's really easy. Just go to iTunes, look at my podcast, either the iPod version or the Apple TV high def version, leave a comment. I go through there, throw everybody's name into a hat, throw out a name at random, you win a nice little coin prize package from landsharks.ca. All right, so I'm gonna reach into the hat here, pull out a name and, oh, actually I pulled out a dog biscuit. There you go, Roxy. All right, let's try this again. You reach in, pull out a, pull out a tag, and congratulations, PG Geodude. You have won yourself a nice little coin package from landsharks.ca, show sponsor. Now, the rules for this, 
two weeks as of the recording. Today is February 13th. Make sure you get me a snail mail address by February 28th. But <laughs> you're right here in Prince George. So uh, just email me and I'll probably place the cash. I'll probably place the coin in a cash for you. And you can come by and pick it up that way. We'll have some fun with it. So there you go, folks. The return of the iTunes coin giveaway contest. Just make sure you get to iTunes. Leave a good comment. Maybe next episode, I'll be pulling your name out of a hat. So early in the show, I mentioned contests, plural. Yes, I'm running more than one contest right now. The iTunes comment coin giveaway is continuing on. Make sure you get the iTunes and leave a comment. And also, I'm introducing the geocaching video contest. Now for this one, I have a very special prize. Landshark has given me a special nickel plated geo addicts coin of which there's only 75. I have one of them and it's the prize in this contest. So how do you enter? Easy. Grab your camera. You know I've been talking about those little flips lately and iPhone cameras and any kind of camera will do. Go out, make a geocaching video. It's that simple. Upload it to a public uh, video site such as YouTube or Blip. Email me the address. I'll create a web page with all the different videos on them. People will be able to come in and comment and rank them and such. And at the end of June, We'll, uh, I'll be judging for the best video, and if your video is judged the overall best, you'll win a coin. So you got from now to the end of June, all the way up to summer. So we got many months, so get your cameras out there and start shooting videos. And send me the links at geoicenri at icenri.com and may the best video win. Now, there are a few rules I'd like you guys to follow. The biggest one is no copyright music, please. If you're going to use music, please go to a website such as the Pod Show Music Network, and there you can download music that's under the Creative Commons license, and you're allowed to use that in your videos. However, if you're using copyright music, unfortunately, uh, your video will not be allowed, and chances are YouTube's going to take it down anyways because they're starting to crack down on that stuff. So there you go. Grab your video camera, go out, start shooting. Get it out there on the internet, send me a dress, and sometime in July, I'll be giving away a very limited edition Geo Addicts coin. So that about wraps up this episode of the video podcast. I hope you enjoyed. Hey, what do you think, girl? But just before we go, as usual, always a couple notes. First off, Land Sharks, hey guys, thanks for your continuing support. You guys sent me some great stuff to give away as prizes, and it's finally good to, to have the iTunes comment giveaway contest going again. So, uh, again, guys, for all your geocaching coins and swag needs, make sure you check out landsharks.ca. Also, I'd like to thank the financial contributors to the show. Guys, without your contributions, the show wouldn't be possible. Your contributions go towards paying production costs and mostly web hosting costs for this, for my website and for my videos and such. And if you'd like to contribute to the podcast, it's very easy. Just go to my website, icenry.com. Just look for the PayPal donation buttons right there on the front page. So in the meantime, in between time, that's it. Another episode of Ice and Rye's Geocaching Video Zine. So until the next episode, cash on. <laughs>